It looks like OpenAI is trying to decrease the regulatory risk in Europe in a bunch of really interesting moves. They've sent out some emails. So today on the podcast, I'm going to be diving into all of that and covering what I think their strategy going forward is to essentially have the smallest um, disruption or the smallest risk possible. So let's get into the podcast. We gonna bring it to you just like that. Welcome everyone to the future's AI chat. Bringing you the interviews and giving you info to be in the know. Tech company CEOs of Rock with us. Bet you gonna come back. I'm just saying the facts. This is AI chat. Let's go. So the big news here is that OpenAI has recently sent an email just last month where they detailed an update to their terms for European Union regulatory compliance. So ChatGPT, um, of course, has gotten a lot of scrutiny in Europe because of privacy concerns, which I think they actually had like an issue, if you remember earlier last year, where like Italy banned ChatGPT for a while. And I think Poland had some issues as well. And I think while they eventually did like get that figured out and moved past that, it was all for like privacy concerns. Um, and so right now, I think OpenAI is really trying to avoid having like a big mass uh, disruption event. And so they're making some changes. So Italy's original investigation caused, of course, the entire suspension of ChatGPT for the whole country. Um, and I think because of that, OpenAI has now shifted its service provisions for EEA and also Swiss residents to OpenAI Ireland Limited. So um, this is actually a move that a lot of big tech companies have made where essentially they have like their European headquarters in Ireland. A lot of people do that for tax reasons, but it would appear that it also has some benefits for kind of privacy and for um, compliance reasons within the EU. Um, some people are, I think there's like some elements where you have to have like the data hosted in the EU and stuff like that. So the updated privacy policy that OpenAI has been talking about states that OpenAI Ireland Limited is the controller of personal data processing in the EEA and Switzerland. So these new terms of use, um, which are naming the Dublin-based subsidiary as the data controller, are going to be effective uh, from February 15th this year. So pretty much what they're doing is instead of having to, yeah, we, we see the same kind of thing with like China, where China needs you to have all the data for apps that are running in China in China itself. So I mean, pretty much for them, it's so the government can look through it and stuff. Um, but, you know, I don't think we have those strict rules in the United States. And a lot of people have complained about that because of TikTok and, you know, data going over to China for that. So there's a whole nother can of worms, but it would appear that the United States doesn't do this. And Europe is so now OpenAI to try to get around this is using kind of this Dublin subsidiary as their new data controller. So users can delete their accounts if they don't like the terms. It's, it's like, there's not really like an opt in opt out. It's just like, uh, if you're continuing to use your account, you agree. If you don't agree, then uh, you're going to have to you know, delete your account. So GDPR is kind of one-stop shop mechanism, essentially allows for some streamlined privacy oversight under the um, under this data supervisory um, in the uh, from EU member states. But essentially, this status limits the unilateral action of privacy watchdogs in other EU states, which are typically referring um, complaints back to the main kind of established companies lead supervisor right so essentially the problem is like you get like italy or poland or other watchdogs in other countries complaining they're going to send it back to kind of the main central hub that covers some of these gdpr compliance issues um so right now the irish data protection commission which is the dpc um they confirmed that they're currently working with OpenAI regarding this kind of gdpr's um one-stop shop status kind of taking care of this for them where um, they're going to help them on this. OpenAI did open this Dublin office back in September. So this isn't like some brand new thing that they just started. But um, they've been hiring for policy, legal, and privacy roles, among a bunch of other things. But like, what's interesting here is this isn't just like, oh, we have a new headquarters where we have like a bunch of developers. It's like they literally have uh, a hub or like a headquarters in Dublin where they're hiring like like lawyers, privacy experts, policy experts. It, it's really literally just a uh, subsidiary so that they can get around or like not get you know impeded by some of this um, policy issues so five job positions um, I've noticed that are currently open in on their like website when they're hiring for Dublin so they are like some privacy software engineers and a bunch of different managerial roles but it's all in that same area so for GDPR's main kind of establishment status, OpenAI has to prove Dublin's entity's um, decision-making influence over European data. So pretty much 
they have this new headquarters and like that new headquarters has uh, complete uh, control over the data that's coming from uh, anyone using ChatGPT in Europe, for example. So they have to prove that it's not just like, you know, they set up some sort of like puppet over there and it really it's all people in America that are making these decisions. And so I think because of that, we're going to start seeing them uh, hire a pretty solid team there. Um, OpenAI's GDPR status in Ireland could, I think, essentially just be the same as a bunch of other tech giants, Apple, Google, Meta, TikTok, um, Twitter, like they've all done this. And so I think they're going to be essentially just kind of copying the same roadmap. So the Irish DPC has a lot of criticisms, though, at, at the same time for kind of its pace and also for um, so a lot of people criticize it for how it handles some GDPR oversight. Um, existing GDPR probes by Italy and Poland into ChatGPT, I think are going to influence um, some of the regional regulation. But I think the impact from those is pretty small. I mean, if we're being honest, Italy, Poland, these are not massive countries when compared to like Europe as a whole. And so I think at the end of the day, like they want their, I would assume they're going to want their citizens to have the benefit of using some of these AI technologies because it isn't just ChatGPT. This is going to be anthropic. It's going to be everything else as well. So um, whatever ChatGPT has to do, a lot of these other AI companies will have to do similar things as well. So OpenAI's kind of updated European privacy policy also includes more detail on, uh, you know, legal bases for data processing. I think this is kind of suggesting a bit of a public interest argument. But in any case, GDPR's watchdogs right now are looking, trying to make essentially a consensus on data protection laws and AI with the European Data Protection Board's task force. Um, and Ireland specifically, I think, has the potential to kind of lead uh, this and kind of have a pretty solid lead role in OpenAI's GDPR supervision. Um, and I think all of this could definitely influence generative AI and privacy right enforcements um, throughout the whole region. So UK users, what I found was kind of interesting, are also under the jurisdiction of OpenAI's US entity. So they're not actually affected by all of the legal basis switch uh, that happened with Ireland after, because of, you know, of course, Brexit. The UK is not part of the EU. And so they'll just be, they'll continue to be under, um, you know, kind of fall under the, the US, uh, OpenAI's US entity. Now, um, I think this is interesting. I, at the end of the day, I feel like it's just kind of more hoops to jump through. But I have spoken with people from Europe that are, um, you know, really like the direction of Europe's privacy. So I guess, you know, it's a, it's a matter of opinion there. And a lot of people think Europe's doing it right. Some people think America's doing it right. That's a debate. And I'm sure everyone has a different opinion on that, uh, depending on where you're from. But I think what we what isn't much of a debate is that this definitely is added complexity. So um, OpenAI obviously is handling this. This is a company that has raised billions of dollars. I wonder, though, for smaller AI companies, um, if this is going to be too much of a regulatory hurdle or if they're kind of going to be able to fly under the radar if they have, uh, you know, they're, they're below a certain threshold. In any case, it's going to be interesting. It seems that once you get to a certain size company, you're going to have to start taking a lot of this seriously so you're not uh, disrupted by some of these regulatory, um, some of these regulations and et cetera. So I'll definitely keep you updated on everything that's happening with this story and if OpenAI has any negative impacts from all of this. But uh, thanks so much for tuning in and until next time. Thank you for listening to the AI Chat Podcast. If you enjoyed the podcast, I'd appreciate it if you rate me wherever you listen to podcasts. And if you're looking for an innovative group of AI enthusiasts, make sure you check out our Discord channel and also our Facebook community. It's obviously a lot more interactive than a podcast where we can actually share software tools, prompts that we're using in everyday AI. I'll leave a link for those in the description below.